Get full access to over 10,000 episodes with your paid subscription. My Outdoor TV. Start your free trial today. 30 the best in the world. That's why we get up in the morning. That's why we go fishing. The guy that puts it together the fastest in these tournaments is the guy that normally ends up winning. The score tracker is what changes the game. This is a marathon, definitely not a sprint. It's what dictates every decision you make. You really have to adjust on the fly with the conditions. Every time the conditions change, these fish change. There it is. There he is. <clears throat> Got her, yes. <clears throat> <laughs> Thank you, baby. That's a good sign right there. General Tire's Major League Fishing. It's the Wiley X Summit Cup from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Presented by B&W Trailer Hitches. All right, well, Lake of the Ozarks. The place to be for a good time. This should be tough this time of year. Most places are tough right now. Predominant pattern up here in this part of the country in the fall of the year is fish the back of the creeks. However, that's what we're in is a creek. That's our day's limitations. Oh, we got a high pressure front coming through. The sun's going to pop out. So if I was picking a zone to fish today under these conditions, this would definitely be one I would look at. We live in a dream, just living a dream. We're going to catch them today. Everybody is. Welcome to General Tires Major League Fishing. 30 anglers have assembled at Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks to compete for the title of Summit Cup champion. To make it to this level of competition, each angler had to qualify with the top performance from stages seven and eight of the 2019 Bass Pro Tour. Today, 10 will face off in elimination round one, but only six will move on to the sudden death rounds, putting them one step closer to the Summit Cup trophy and fortifying their chances to qualify for the world championship. Let's meet today's 10 anglers. Coming in is the third ranked angler, Cliff Pace. Right behind him in fourth place, Cody Meyer. Next up in ninth place, Anthony Gagliardi. Close behind at number 10, Takahiro Omori. Holding on to 15th place, Michael Neal. At number 16, Gerald Sporer. At the 21st place spot, Andy Montgomery. Next in line, at 22nd, Brandon Coulter. He holds a 27th place ranking, Russ Lane. And rounding out the field, in 28th, Aaron Martins. The chilly October air is a sign of the fall migration. But with no practice, these anglers must make an educated guess on what to tie on before they hit the water. Takahiro Omori shows us his confident baits for fall fishing. In today's general tire, anywhere is possible. We are Central Missouri. This is the time of the year. I'm looking for the shad. If you find shad around the back of the creek or maybe around the points or near the boat docks, bass is around. So I brought my own square wheel crankbait. It's a basic shad cutter, dive maybe zero to five feet, breather jig with a white trailer to just cover a lot of water. Bass bait, anytime bass are chasing shad in the fall, bass bait is a great bait and a spinner bait, just a basic half ounce white spinner bait. So these are bait, I'm hoping to get some bite wherever they take me, anywhere as possible. With no practice and no information, the anglers had no idea where they would be fishing until they pulled up to the ramp this morning. With more on that, let's go to Marty Stone with today's Lake Breakdown. Elimination round number one. And today, the anglers are fishing the Lake of the Ozarks in the Gravoy Creek area, the lower third of the lake. This is going to be a true fall fishing event. The leaves are changing. The water's falling. The water temp's falling as well. This is without a doubt one of the most scenic lakes I've ever been on. What the anglers are going to find this morning during their ride through with their mercury-powered Nitro Z18s is a target-rich environment. This lake's got boat docks. There's marinas, retaining walls, but rock will probably be the dominant factor. And the rock that they're gonna face is anywhere from riprap to chunk rock to bluff walls. And lastly, the backs of the creeks. The docks are shallow. 
The water's a little bit more stained. And there's wood cover back there. Some of it from the old original flooded shoreline, but a lot of it has been washed in from recent rains. Last night, we had a tremendous amount of rain and lightning. And today, we're greeted with a front that's moving in. It's heavy west, southwest winds, 10 to 20 miles an hour. And when you get wind on these lakes, these fish respond. See what the weather did last night. Lots of storms. I'm a little worried about the lightning. You know, I was hoping to get on a top water bite this morning. I'm a little worried the lightning might have shut that down a little bit. But uh, go to the back and see what happens. Let's go. Let's see what she does. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's the same. One thing that you got to pick out the place like this and what's flatter and what's steeper. So right here, I just wanted to idle real quick on the outside of some of these docks and see what the depth is out on the end of them. So these are about 10 to 12 foot. And you can see it's kind of coming up on this little pocket. It's kind of place where these fish will start to gang up for that fall transition. The one thing you have here is just a million boat houses, and it's very hard to produce. You, you're going to, if you're going to fish boat docks here, you've got to kind of put a pattern within a pattern. You can't just fish boat docks because they're truly everywhere. I imagine it's mostly largemouth here. I, I don't know nothing about this lake. I'm going to go back up to where uh, the boat ramp is and fish that one channel swing bank they got with the crankbait to start. It all looks the same. It's all identical. The banks in this creek here look better to me. There's a, there's a few rocky banks without docks that you could, you could parallel and, and try to cover some water, but main river arm goes up and splits, and this is the first creek below the split, you know, where it's, you know, real, real backwater. And so, you know, we may end up going all the way in the back there, but I thought uh, this might be a good place to get started. Yeah, I mean, it's got some good flats in the back of these creeks which is good this time of year. There's birds in the back of the creeks. So we got some options. Like what we see. You never know until you get the cricket wet. I'm cold. It's pretty cold. It's colder now than it was when we started, that's for sure. I just came back to the basic fall pattern, come back to the creek because all shad migrated to the back of the creek. You got two boats here, so you go in the back there, I maybe have to go this way. See, if he's start catching fish, I'm gonna turn around and get back there. <laughs> we don't know till we start trolling around and fishing a little bit and uh, just seeing what we can fish. But we need to start fishing because I'm freezing. You'll find expert bass fishing know-how from Mercury MLF Pro Team Anglers at MajorLakeFishing.com backslash Mercury Pro Tactics. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. Wiley X Eyewear. Go confidently. Yeti. Built for the wild. Sonic. This is how we Sonic. Mossy Oak. Hunt. Fish. Repeat. And by Kubota. Together we do more. It's the fall of the year, so. If you read that bass fishing handbook, it says go to the back of the creek. So that's what we did. <laughs> there is no plane that's safe. You got to try to catch them every cast. You got to make decisions sometimes that are high risk, high reward to compete against these guys. So it's elimination round one of General Tires Major League Fishing. The top 30 performers out of stages seven and eight of the 2019 Bass Pro Tour have qualified to compete in the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches. The first group of 10 anglers are eagerly awaiting the countdown to lines in here on Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Today's elimination round will consist of three periods. The top six anglers at the end of period three will advance to the sudden death rounds. The bottom four will be eliminated. Major League Fishing's elimination round one begins now. Five, four, three, two, one, lines in. All right, here we go. Lake of the Ozarks. First cast on Lake of the Ozarks ever in my life. We didn't catch one on the first cast, so that's a good thing. I think. Just pick a spot and start fishing, because I've never been here. You can't really tell what's good until you start getting some bites. 
This is a famous dock lake. I grew up dreaming of fishing this joker. I'm trying to see if I can't throw every rod that I got within the first 10 minutes. There he is. Number one. Hopefully, a little spotted bass. So there are some spotted bass in here. One pound, six ounces. All right, I'll take it. First fish of the day, a little spotted bass. Spinnerbait. First angler overboard, Cody Meyer, one pound, six ounces. Like a good spinnerbait day. Way to go, Cody. Woohoo, go team. Woohoo, me and Cody picked a killer cove, didn't we? Like I say, we're going to definitely cover a lot of water. Put a little jig back on that point. You know, we're kind of in the back of the creek right now. I noticed the water's a little bit cooler back here. A little bit clearer. One pound, 13 ounces. Must have gotten out a bad start. 113, I'll take him for now. Well, I don't think we're gonna be skunked. They don't have to be four pounds, do they? One pound, nine ounces. All right. Well, there we go. Three bites on a crankbait pretty quick, so maybe we'll get it dialed in. One nine. Tons of bait. It's just one big giant school of shad out here in this pocket. Got a face full of hooks. One pound, three ounces. It's a start. One. I'll have to catch a bunch if they're that big. One pound, seven ounces. There we go. Number two. Eat the crankbait a little bit. Pretty quiet. One fish so far? No, yeah, we got a couple other little ones on here now. Dan, you gotta keep up on that. You're fired. Well, I just looked about two minutes ago and there wasn't anybody on there, Eric. So well, I'm they're keep... catching them now. You didn't let me know. <laughs> I, that's gonna change my thoughts. Maybe I need to move. Okay. Rapala Deep T4. Little chartreuse crankbait. I thought we'd have a little more color back in here. I want a little more chartreuse than shad, but. And fish will stage on the end of these long docks like this in the fall. As that bait moves back here, they can get on the end of these docks and ambush it. You got turnover coming. They're uh, usually scattered. Scattered a gun shad. Water's 66 in here. Water temperature is one of the many factors to consider when trying to locate bass in the fall of the year. Marty Stone breaks it down in today's Wiley X Eyewear, more than meets the eye. In the fall of the year, one of the biggest keys is water temp. And any time you get water temps at below 70 degrees, the bass can truly feed and retain their weight. And in this lake, there's very specific bait that these fish will key on. And there's one bait fish in particular that shows up often in the lake of the Ozarks area that a lot of people don't talk about, but I truly think is important. And that's a gizzard shad. It's the bigger cousin of a thread fin. When this bait finally hits the bank, and oftentimes it's keyed by water color and water temp that's falling, these largemouth will focus on it. The anglers that realize that the gizzard shad are present because of the water temp and water color will be anglers that can use power baits cover water faster, and have the potential to catch the bigger fish that live in this lake. Well, you get all these preconceived notions right when you pull up to the lake. You start thinking time of the year, part of the country I'm in, water temperature, behavior of fish. You start getting in your head, I'm going to catch them on this, I'm going to catch them on that. Cream bite should be good, spinnerbait should be good, but I mean, everything should be Decent right now. Buzz bait. Top water. Oh, no, that was a bass. God. That was a pound and a half bass. Um, we're just backing out just a little bit. You know, Takahiro and myself are in the back of that creek, so we're just going to move out and uh, try to find, you know, just try to find a zone where they're at. Got another one. Why are you? That one is. Maybe. 
He's skinny. Super skinny. One pound, four ounces. Take that. Thank you. Mm. One pound, two ounces. Skinny little largemouth. Got on the board on the spinnerbait. Got to start somewhere. <laughs> Missed a couple of fish already, but uh, always happy to catch some fish. Every fish I've caught has been on some kind of point or turn or something. See how it's shallow right here? Kicking the mud on my trolling motor. Normally, cranking the shallow stuff, you don't, you know, that's not the way it is. You don't get multiple bites, you know, unless they're just stacked on a little place. Boy, I've been fishing a lot the last four months. I'll tell you that. No saltwater fishing for me. I should be really good right now. I've been fishing like every day. Oh, I missed it. Got it. One pound, one ounce. Thank you. Take that. Ah. Uh. That's a score tracker update for you. Takahiro Moray is now in second place. He has two fish, two pounds, five ounces. All right, so six guys on. Six guys on, yes, sir. All right, let's catch them. It looks like it's a grind them out deal for everybody. Everybody's in the same boat, literally. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. Stay up to date with the latest from MLF. Watch the Bass Pro Tour on MLF now and learn from Major League lessons free at MajorLeagueFishing.com slash TV. Man, I think we just went from like extreme overcast to bluebird in a matter of a couple minutes. Yeah, I like the sun. It's elimination round one on Lake of the Ozarks. The anglers are hoping the sun will shed some light on where the bass are hiding. Brandon Coulter and Takahiro Omori are the only pros to score multiple fish, while the bottom four anglers are still searching for their first clue. Only the top six will advance to the sudden death rounds, and eliminating water quickly could help to avoid elimination. Well, that's two bites on a spinnerbait. You know, only one's been a scoreable, but that's a bigger zone than I thought, for sure. Just trying to find an area where I feel like there's some fish. You know, I started in the back of a creek. It was, there was me and another guy in there, and we both had a few bites. He caught a couple, I caught one. Um, but I, I felt like we had fished it pretty hard. I didn't want to get on top of him, so I left there and came to another area. And, you know, it, it's the same type deal. I'm just way in the back of a real flat creek back here. We're going to keep moving until we get on something where we can put multiple fish on the score track. Looks like a dark day, sunny as it is. I'm getting bites. It's just, they're tiny. That's another bite right there. They're just, they're like 10 inches. One pound, six ounces. You got a little spinner bait right there in the little, little point of rock. Come on. We need to catch one. Oh, let's catch one. It's our turn. I'd like to keep fishing this bank, but I don't think that's going to happen. So I'll have to go find another one. Uh, barely, barely, barely hooked. Oh my gosh. <laughs> One pound, 13 ounces. That's about right. Just number one, it's a nice fish. That was nice. Barely, barely, barely got the stinger hook. One pound, four ounces. Thank you. Ah, number three. Had a centimeter of flesh on the outside of his lip. What does that tell me? They're not biting very good. They're a little, they're a little funky because of the weather last night. Let's catch another one like that. How about Andy Montgomery back there? Andy Montgomery has yet to put a fish on the score tracker. Russ Lane has also not put a fish on the score tracker. Uh, I hung my thunder cricket in a tree. So we retied my thunder cricket. When I was shaking that tree, trying to get my cricket out of the tree, I must have knocked something out of the tree because I seen two brim come up and eat something. So they are brim in here which means they're all bass. 
Should be. Logical thinking. One pound, ten ounces. Agreed. Little by little, chipping away. Got it. One pound, six ounces. Thank you. Taco, Has take the lead. Caught his fourth bass, weighing one pound, six ounces, giving him four pounds, 15 ounces total, putting him in first position by five ounces over yourself. Taco Hero's caught another fish. He's at six pounds, zero ounces. Taco Hero showing off. We still in sixth place? You're still at six. That's the only change on the score tracker. I mean, first place is not, not far from us right now. I mean, we just got to make the top six. But I mean, those guys are catching, starting to catch some fish. I mean, we're definitely a couple fish away, and we're right back in it. I think normally it's 15-inch size limit in this week, but 50 inches. Wow. Dr. Yero's now got six fish for seven pounds of nine ounces. No, he's figured something out. He's just right around there doing the same thing, I guarantee you. I mean, it's always hard to find fish in new places, and uh, all of my other competitors are struggling too. So I'm just fishing those docks point, lay down. Um, I know this is a pattern, but this is the time of the year. You know, fish, shad migrate to the back of the creek, but uh, I don't see no shad yet. Maybe because in the morning, it's still cold. But uh, usually, this fishing get better in the afternoon, for sure, when they warm up. This side where the creek's pouring out, and it's a little cooler, so maybe over there. I don't know. It's hard to think till you get a bite. Then you can do some serious thinking. Dark sure do get in my way. This is not really how I intended to fish. The way I wanted to fish was fishing them, you know, them the way I started on them long docks and stuff. But I don't know if maybe these fish are past that. They've already moved on further back. I know the bait is definitely past that. Big one, big one, big one. Wow. He's not hooked good. Oh, he's barely hooked. I'm coming around to you. Big, but bigger. Two pounds, seven ounces. Two seven. He looked bigger now. Yeah. I'll take him. Two seven. That helps the cause. Uh, what about that? Brandon Coulter caught his fourth fish. Up ahead. He's out seven pounds, one ounce. His last fish weighed two pounds, seven ounces. Oh! That's what Andrew needs to get a hold of. You know, everybody complains about the fish they lose and stuff. I've made four more casts now to where that fish was, and I ain't got one through the leaves yet. You know what I mean? It was, people don't think about how fortunate they are when they do catch one, let alone, you know what I mean? It's always, I lost this or I lost that one. How in the world do you not catch one of all this bait? They fishing to make me grumpy. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup.
presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Whoa! Donkey Hero's now got six fish for seven pounds of nine ounce. No, he's figured something out. Talk a hero, my hero. That's what I'm just gonna start calling him, my hero. Not talk a hero. My hero! I just focus on my own fishing right now to not worry about other stuff. Takahiro Amori has found a shallow hot spot on Lake of the Ozarks, as you can see here in today's favorite fishing overview of the day. Our top two anglers continue to climb the score tracker in spite of the tough conditions on Lake of the Ozarks. Both anglers have triggered most of their bites with a crankbait. Coulter is focused on docks, while Takahiro has expanded his area in the back of a creek. Andy Montgomery is chasing bait in the same creek as Takahiro, but the bass just aren't picking up what he's putting down. For more on that, here's Marty Stone for today's six hour success in sight. In the fall of the year, water's drawn down. You have isolated wooden targets that have less water. It congregates bass and bait fish all in the same place. In the fall, there's so many shad around all these targets that you've got to trigger a bass to bite. An angler has to make repeated cast to isolated targets. The electronics and GPS mapping that we've got available today, they're not gonna help you in situations like this, but old school knowledge will. Takahiro More is taking that knowledge in today's elimination round, and he's using a shallow square bill crankbait along with a white jig, a shad imitator, to make repeated cast to the isolated targets, and that's what's allowing him to have success in elimination round number one. I mean, I, they just shat everywhere. Running from my trolling motor, it's crazy. I guess they too full to bite my thunder cricket. So the fish are not eating right now. I mean, yesterday it probably had been a lot, three times as good as today. It's this little front came through, it's cold and sunny. Had some lightning and tornado watch last night, that messed them up a little bit. I really want to switch to like a white jig or something around these docks, but God almighty, they're eating a the crankbait just fine. It's not the jig, it, they like to see something moving. They're eating shad, aminos. It's the time of the year. They like fast moving bait. What's the shad? I don't know, they're every, look, yeah. look at that. That's and they want to bite my hard plastic dirt bait because why? What in the heck are you doing out here? <laughs> Fish land violation. Really? Penalty. It's my best, no? Large no. They ain't gone, man. That tells you no, it's not biting good. Look at it. One pound, three ounces. He bit that sucker right at the boat. He's pretty. He's actually warmer than I am. Yeah, you feeling a little better than Andrew, ain't you? One pound, three ounces. Man, I guess he could be. It's a little heavier than that, whatever. I, I mean, he bit me way. I mean, he wasn't even nowhere near the dock. I didn't even throw on the dock. He just bit it out here. And then I seen some bait come up right there, so I don't know if he... I mean, they suspend in the fall bad, obviously. Super hard to catch. Aaron, that fish brings your total to three pounds even. Woo! Moves you from fifth place to third place. Yes! One more. Wow, they look so good here now. Not a good bet. They're starting out quick, not necessarily a good thing. Those fish can lie to you, get you heading down the wrong path. Oh, little score there. God, it felt like a good one. It is a good one for today. <laughs> one pound, six ounces. All right, same as the last one. One six, I'll take it. Little piece of structure, little spinner bait, super shallow. You know, we haven't really fished shallow yet today. Cody Mars has caught a second fish. He's now at uh, two pounds and 12 ounces in fourth place. He's in fourth? Yes, yeah, fourth. Two pounder moves me into fourth. Wow, well, you can catch one good one and take the lead.
Maybe. I don't think so, but... One pound, zero ounces. One pound even. That's it. Hey, it's only a one pounder, but, you know, it's another, another scoreable fish. I mean, right now, so far, you know, they've been hard to come by. All right, let's ride. Whew. Keep moving. There he is. It's a good one here. It's what we need. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Got her. Yes. That's what we're after. Maybe we figure something out. You know, we came up shallow. That's the second fish we've caught now. That's a good one, man. Three pounds, six ounces. Three pounds, six ounces. Lake Ozark special. Beauty. Cody Meyer has now moved into second place with seven pounds, two ounces. He had a three pound, six ounce bass. Whoa. I'd say we came back here in this little creek, real shallow, a little more stained. We're gonna we're gonna stick with this. Obviously, you know we've been fishing all morning, kind of out deep on some of those bluffs. Haven't really been working. It's a good sign. That's what we need. That's a good sign right there. One pound, six ounces. It'll be all right. All right, maybe that will be the one that triggers a flurry. Oh, I can't help it. Those look so good. I have to come back here when, when water warm up. The shad get a little aggressive. Maybe we can figure something out and catch a few right before the end of this thing. It'd be nice. Stick to the end of the docks, I guess. It's another one out there into the dock. Aaron Martin just caught his third fish. Gives him four pounds and six ounces. Fourth place knocks you down into fifth place. OK. Nice, nice. You can get a bigger one. You can get a bigger one any moment. I'll take one six all day long, though. Well, it might be starting to bite a little bit. Maybe I'm look for more docks. Fish into the docks. Look at all of them. Oh, my gosh, just thousands of them. Right on. That'll score. That'll score. Obviously, there's it's this rock. I mean, they are they are on this rock. One pound, two ounces. We'll take it. Take it. Came back. Same area, just on the other side, and caught another one. You know, we're we're creeping up right on this rock. You know what it is? Pretty shallow here. And then it's dredged out right by this rock. You know, it's three or four feet, and heck, that's three or four fish so far. So keep it going. You got five minutes. Well, four nine scoreables today. That's all we've caught. Can't get nothing else to work. Just right here in the front. <laughs> Four pounds, eight ounces. <laughs> yeah. This is going to change the things. Tucker Hero Moray, four pounds, eight ounces. Holy mackerel. He's moved back into first place. He has seven fish for 12 pounds and one ounce. Tucker Hero. That was awesome. I went down that little tree on my square beer. This is a pattern. It should work this time of the year, this kind of lake. So now I got to come back here next period, I guess. Three, two, one. Line's out. That's the end of period one. Ain't nobody out of it. Just, just got to keep moving. That's slow, no matter no matter if you're in, in the hunt or not. So we need to pick the pace up. We have a great start, but uh, we need to keep going, keep, keep fishing, and uh, we need to keep catching them, so. I really can't make it work. I can get some bites. I've had, I don't know, probably 10 bites this morning, but only one of them has been a scoreable one. Um, I'm going to have to just abandon, it, it, you know, what I'm what I'm trying to make work and, and go try to start over and figure out something else. Talk would have outpaced me with that four-pounder, but, I mean, I was catching fish for fish with him and Cody. I just, I lost a couple. I came back here because of the time of the year, you know, and I see those 
board hanging around for the shed. And I took the channel side, deeper side first, never had a bite. So I came to the little shallow side, caught fish. So see what happened next period. General Tires Major League Fishing is brought to you by Berkeley. Catch more fish. Lucas Oil. Made in America. Sold to the world. Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Venmo. Pay. Split. Share. And by Favorite Fishing. The future of fishing. What I've noticed in these deals is when the fishing's tough, everyone's quiet. And the fishing wasn't easy today. And, you know, everybody was kind of on edge. And nobody had really caught that many yet, and I was in the top five. I figured I was doing the right thing. I just needed to find a little sweet area. I only caught two. I mean, and, you know, most times that's going to be really, really bad, and you're going to be behind the eight ball and have to make a change in your game plan. But, you know, I was still in fifth place. We had wind, but everything else was post-frontal conditions, in my opinion. So I was kind of torn, do you go fish the wind and fish fast with reaction baits, or do I need to go slow down and try to, you know, fish in wood or rock or things of that nature? I ate me a little bit of peanut butter, and here we go. Bounce back, get a little wet, freeze to death, and go back fishing again. While our pros line up for period two, let's take a look at the score tracker. In the final minutes of period one, Takahiro Omori scooped up a four and a half pound Berkeley Big Bass and is our must add point position leader heading into period two. Cody Meyer made a last minute charge of his own by landing three fish back to back to back. The wind is picking up and the changing conditions could present another challenge for the anglers to overcome. Today is a good day, ladies and gentlemen, to fly a kite. Fishing, I don't know yet. Flying a kite, look at this. I know they're going to bite in the afternoon. My guy's not the stupid, you know, they're going to catch him. We're going to try not to get wet on our way back to our fishing hole. How mighty knows. Woo! Three, two, one, go. A little bit rough. Yeah. Where'd he go? 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 Where to go? Oh! The shad are real high in the water column. The lake may be turning over, I'm not sure. Um, but even out over the deep water, all the shad are up high. Um, so I'm going to try to target the backs of some of these little smaller arms like this off of this creek. I'm pretty sure there's, there's going to be some fish on these upper ends of these arms. We just got to. It might take a period to figure it out, but I feel like I like where I'm at. Picked a different creek arm starting this time. A little bit different scenery. Everybody else went to the one we were in. Nobody else came in here, so it's either going to be a good thing or a bad thing. Right. Finally broke the ice. One pound, 10 ounces. Caught him on a square bill. Made about 10 casts of that tree before that fish finally bit. So there's a lot more wood, as you can see, on this flat. That was pretty much one of the first pieces that came to. One pound, 10 ounces. All right, thank you, baby. I think we figured something out. It just takes time to dissect all this stuff. I mean, this is just a textbook fall of the year type deal. And I don't think he's fishing really wanting to bite good. That fish just barely ticked that plug. And I feel like with the conditions we got, you know, if you're going to grind, I think you're better to grind in this than you are in that gin clear water. Yeah, it's bad conditions for you. It may get better later in the day. He's scorable. He's barely hooked again. One pound, five ounces. Hmm. We might have figured something out. 
I only fished a couple pieces of wood. And I already caught two on the square bill. Daryl got on a little something. Must be fishing calm water. It is very hard to do. The wind is blowing very bad. It's hard to cast. You get hung up a lot. It's tough. These are supposed to be good fish on these bluffs. It's crazy. They not reading the book today. That's a pretty decent one. Quit before you come off. Two pounds, four ounces. All I need is him. Move up a couple spots. Just gotta keep churning and burning. Nothing any different where he was and what I fished for the last 400 yards. How big was old Michael Neal's? His last fish was two pounds, four ounces. Lucky guy, wow. I'd like to crank, but there's so many leaves. I don't think you can do it without staying hung up all the time. I think he's gonna do it. Gerald's four is now in sixth place with three pounds, 15 ounces. Whoa. Two. What the heck, Andy? One pounders. When it's tough like this, I love them. I love them. They're just as pretty as the big ones. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. How about this weather? I mean, has it not gotten worse? I mean, it's blowing harder and harder. The wind, there's so much wind, I can't really skip underneath them. I ain't got no choice but to catch him on the side. Our legs will be sore today trying to balance in this boat. It's elimination round one, and the anglers are facing strong winds. However, it hasn't seemed to face Gerald Sporer, who has scaled three scorable bass since the start of period two. Only the top six will advance to the sudden death rounds, and a two-pound fish would put any of the bottom four anglers in contention. But with today's conditions, that's easier said than done. The wind's definitely not letting up. If it's doing anything, it's getting stronger. Couldn't do this without power poles, either. See, they're on these boats right here. That's where they're at. It's just hard to get a bait with the wind blowing your white caps. <sighs> missing too many on a spinner bait. Golly, man, miss a ton. Trouble hook, trouble hook bait when they're missing a spinner bait. Trouble hook. Barely got him by the trailer hook. Quit. Michael, that'd be a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. One pound, 10 ounces. Well, I think we're gonna crash. Can I throw this you off the bank? Yeah, you can get us off the bank. That's where they're at. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's still the trailer hook on there. She whiz. That's a real compact spinnerbait I'm throwing. Nothing real special, just small blades. A lot of the bait this time of year in the fall is real small, so I like a spinnerbait that's got a, a somewhat of a clear skirt and real small blades on it to match the hatch this time of year. And they like it in the wind. He ate that one good. He ate that one good. Front hook. One pound, two ounces. Oh, he's so little. Ha! Maybe. One pound, two ounces. Hey, one thing for sure, they don't live alone when you catch one. It's like every time I've caught one, I've either seen one follow it in or get another bite there. This bait right here could, man, if they, that one ate it good. I, and that's like, a, when they're on this, the water temperature's right, everything's right for this bait right here.
Come on, buddy. Calm down. One pound, three ounces. Thank you, Lord. Ain't much, but we will take him. Russ Lane's caught his third fish. Gives him three pounds and four ounces. Moves you back down into ninth now with three pounds and three ounces. Obviously, what I thought was going on is not going on. Am I still in sixth? You are still in sixth place. It's kind of like the last cup. I hung around six all freaking day, and I got bumped right at the last minute. This man violation, two minute penalty. Gonna get us off this dock. Go right here. I take that back. Andy Montgomery just caught a fish that weighed one pound, two ounces. That moves him into sixth place with four pounds, 10 ounces. Has Cody caught one since he's been in here? No, Cody Meyer's still in third with eight pounds, four ounces. Now, we're going to fish a couple of these laydowns, then we're going to go in back to another creek and just try to see if we can see some more rock or some type of riprap or something. I mean, obviously, there was, there was some fish around there. I don't know why I'm catching little ones. I sure ain't fishing for them. That don't look like no little fish bait, does it? The thunder's caught big and it's weird. I can't figure out what docks they own. I mean, I catch, I've caught like half of them in a pocket and half of them out here on the main. It's just put the trolling motor down and go as hard as you can, I guess. This is a good way to catch a big one. I might, I'm gonna get a big one before the day is over. No, 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 no. Seen him come up and get it. Oh, you ain't a rod holder, are you? No. <laughs> One pound, 11 ounces. Thank you, sir. Pretty little fish. It didn't take me as long that time. He was up there shallow. Four tracker update. Michael Neal, one pound, 11 ounces. He's his fourth place with he has eight pounds one ounce. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Brandon, there's a little movement on the score tracker. In other words, quit screwing around and catch a fish. We're catching you. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing. Got it. Yay, yay, yay. Go, Tuck. One pound, one ounce. Thank you. Mm. Walking hard this period. By the time now, everybody know fishing's bad. It's been a tough grind for today's group of anglers, but Takahiro Omori continues to send envy across the score tracker. Only the top six will advance, and the elimination line is within reach. However, for the bottom four anglers, that line has never seemed so far away. I don't matter today, second, third, fourth, fifth. That's all that matter today, just to survive, to be top six. So. I'm thinking it's reaching that point in the day where I need to figure out how to make this work or I'm gonna get left behind. You know, the only fish I've caught has been in the back of them creeks in that dirty water, which has only been two. But I've done that so much without, without catching anything. You know, when you do it for three hours and you catch one, for me, it, it's hard to just keep doing that. Actually, Cody did me a favor and didn't catch a fish. Keeps me from wasting my time. Right on, finally. Only took me an hour and a half, but we got us one. You know, I was just noticing there's a little creek that comes in here. There is so much bait, it's crazy. I'm thinking, how am I not catching one? Finally. Speaking of Cody Meyer, he just caught a fish that weighed two pounds, zero ounces. He's in second place with 10 pounds, four ounces. That's the first fish I think he's caught this period. It was a long time coming, this period. I started thinking, man, what am I doing wrong? Why am I not catching them? 
That was a lucky bite there. Oh, gosh. Come on, man. I know I'm doing the right thing. Need a little luck and get rid of the bad luck. Fish landing violation, two minute penalty. Wet jig, that swim bait came up and got me. Quit, quit, quit. Trailer hook only. Two pounds, two ounces. Little chubby one. Yeah, it is a nice little spot. A nice spot. Quit fish. I one got pound, 12 ounces. I got to catch another one. Score tracker update. Michael Neal, one pound, 12 ounces. He's moving into third place with nine pounds, 13 ounces. He's seven ounces behind you. Anthony Aguilardi has caught another fish. He's moved up to sixth place, caught a two pound, two ounce fish. He now has five pounds, five ounces. But that is the reason I don't throw a spinnerbait in open water without a trailer hook. If I can ever get away with it, I got one on there. I hadn't learned a whole lot. I mean, I just, man, it's just been, you know, few and far between with the bites for me. Where's uh, sixth now? Sixth place, Anthony Gagliardi, five pounds, five ounces. So I got almost double that. <laughs> that fish hit it as I was bringing it out of the water. Dropped it back and he got it. That was luck right there. Michael Neal's now up to second place, 10 pounds, 15 ounces. Well, we got to snatch this one here. This ain't working here. I guess he come out of that little piece of wood right there. I didn't see. Oh, yeah. Cool, biggin'. Yes. Look at that. Pitch and skip. <laughs> Thank you. Three pounds, two ounces. Right. You skinny sucker. Whew, I needed that. Get a little momentum going. You ugly, but I love you. Russ Lane just caught his fourth fish. Yes. It's three pounds, two ounces. Moves him into fifth place with six pounds, six ounces. Aaron, that moves you to sixth place with five pounds, eight ounces. Lucky three pounder. Where's my three pounder at? Shad everywhere back here. Come on, don't you come off. One pound, three ounces. Thank you, thank you. Pitch and skip G. Doing it. Come on, baby. One pound, two ounces. Woo, little spotted bass. Second spotted bass keeper of the day. So here's the deal, guys. Every time we get back here in these shallow pockets, we start getting bites. Cody Meyer has also caught another fish. He now has a total of 11 pounds, six ounces What's to a the seven, score tracker. What's the seventh place? Seventh place is five pounds, five ounces. That's the most important today, no and be sevens. Oh my goodness. I just saw a big wad of them up there. There it is. Not big, but he'll make the grade. Two pound, two ounces. Two, two. I needed that one. I needed that one. Oh, right before the, right before the cutoff. One pound, one ounce. Barely made it. That was so cool. I was winding up, and the shad went. 
And so I just pumped my crankbait one time and went, Koo. Three, two, one. Lines out into period two. Much better in period one. One keeper that period. Wow. Not a whole lot caught either. There's a few guys caught too, but pretty slow. I got to probably catch, I got to catch three fish probably in the last period to have a shot. I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. I don't know what to say. It's brutal. I got no balance today. Can't stand up on the boat. We're not out of it, though. Call back up. That was a good round. Just, it's just a grind. That's all it is. I hate to keep using that word, but that's it. We're going to go into period three. You know, we have uh, a little bit of a cushion on sixth place, but nothing is safe. I mean, these guys are going to come out next period and really catch them. So we got to do the same, but another two and a half hours to go. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Squincher, hydration that works. Six Sour, the complete systems provider. Enjoy Crockett Creek beef jerky from our backyard to yours. Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. And by Ferguson. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup. Presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. It's elimination round one, and our 10 anglers are fighting to finish in one of the top six spots to advance to the sudden death rounds. While they gear up for the third and final period, let's take a look at the score tracker. Despite the tough conditions, our top four anglers have built up some breathing room, but the rest of the field is gasping for air. Russ Lane landed a valuable three pound bass in period two, leaving Aaron Martins and Anthony Gagliardi on the fringe of elimination. For more on that, let's go out to Marty Stone for today's Yeti Cooler Talk. Fall tournaments are tough, weight's irrelevant. You gotta be above that sixth place elimination line. Yeah, I mean, it, and this is tough, today's tough. Uh, obviously we're, got, we're in a little bit of a post frontal condition today. Uh, fish are scattered, and when the shad are shallow and, and numbers like that, it's really, really tough because they got so much bait around them to feed on whenever they want to. I probably need three bites, you know, three keep the fish in this next round to have a shot, maybe. Post front, we always understand the afternoon bites a little bit better. Right. You've only caught three scoreable. Have you seen anything that makes you think you can go duplicate or maybe add to what you've got? This morning, I felt like I found something that was probably going to carry me through the day, and I'd be able to get some bites just running new places. Or do I abandon it and try to do something else that maybe is, is going to be more productive, and, and I can get in there a lot easier? It's, it's going to be a decision I have to make whether to keep doing what I'm doing, try to squeak in or change it up and, and come in with authority. Anthony Gagliardi has got some decisions to make in this third and final period. He's got a little bit of work left to be done if he wants to advance to sudden death. Going back where I caught all my fish, just, just stay there, I guess. All the other places looks like so windy and all that. We're very limited on what we can do with this wind. Fishing's tough, conditions is tough. But we right there, I mean, one fish, especially if we could catch a two and a half or three pounder, you know, you can make a, a really big move. You, you never know, this is a sport where everything can turn real quick. So we're gonna go crank around for final period, see if we can't close it out. It's blowing, it's nasty. We're in Missouri. We gotta go catch some fish. Try to advance on, that's it. Three, two, oh. one, go. I can't. Oh, gosh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, it sucks. That's like 35, 40 mile an hour. Oh, it's coming my way. Oh. Oh. Be nothing but largemouth stacked up around all this stuff. Maybe. One pound, five ounces. All right, I'll take it. That's the way to start the third period. One pound, four ounces. One, four. A few more of those, we'll be all right. Still funny, it's 
pretty pretty cold right now, and the fish are still in the shade. Every time you get near the shade, you get a lot more bites. How's that for fishing? Oh, man. That's a fish landing violation, two minute penalty. One pound, 15 ounces. Good chunk. I keep rolling. One pound, one ounce. All right, I'll take it. Hey, penalties are never fun, but at least it was a scoreable fish. You know, it's, again, we're, we just caught one on the other side of this dock. I threw up there, a little crankbait, hooked one, I think it was a scoreable, lost it, and threw back in there and caught one. So I feel good about this pattern. I mean, I do. I mean, they're not giant fish, but they're fish right now that we definitely, definitely need. So again, we're just fishing these shallow little flats. There is tons of bait back here. They're blowing up all around here. I mean, this is, this is definitely it. You know, we've been kind of running this pattern throughout the whole lake. They're on this little crankbait and getting bites, so let's keep it up. Six positions held by Aaron Morton with five pounds, eight ounces. One pound, three ounces. Sweet. One, three. It's the best thing about MLF format. You know, he got Nick a little bit. You put him in a well and drive him around all day, he ain't got a prayer. Just release them like that. Well, that fish is gonna be just fine. One pound, 12 ounces. Pretty little large, man. Keep burning with a spinnerbait. There was three of them together. See if we get one of them other ones to bite. What's well, six now? Six is five pounds, eight ounces. Hey, 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 everyone. Oh, wind, wind, wind. Hey, my friend, you're my friend, wind, wind. I'm one fish out, huh? One fish out. Yes. Yeah. Just when you think, maybe I need a different color thunder. Look at that. I just thought, maybe I need a different color thunder. Andy Montgomery just caught his fifth fish. It was two pounds, one ounce. That moves him into sixth place with six pounds, 11 ounces. Moves you to seventh with five pounds, eight ounces. All right. Getting lucky with those two pounders. Where's our luck? That is an unbelievable amount of bait in here. Unbelievable amount. Now, every one of these bass is skinny as a rail. He was under those leaves. I guess. They're just out in the middle of nowhere, one. One pound, two ounces. Kind of a bonus fish there. You see that little patch of leaves just making a little canopy, and he was right under the edge of it. Get in here. Yeah, they've had a little flurry going there, so. Yeah. Well, Brandon just moved up to 16 pounds and one ounce. He's four ounces behind Takahiro now. Oh, he's figured something out. I don't care how big they are. That's fine. I mean, that's that's just crazy. Well, we got us a little pattern, boys. Welcome back to General Tires Major League Fishing. Takahiro Mori has caught a one pound, 13 ounce bass. Old sneaky talk. That's awesome for Taka Taka. It's probably way back in the creek, way back up in it. I think you'd be able to catch occasional stupid bass up in here. The only reason I don't quit right now is because I want to spend more time here to figure it out. 
Takahiro Omori holds the lead and continues to raise the bar on Lake of the Ozarks. Today's prize is a ticket to the sudden death rounds, and only the top six will move on. Andy Montgomery is inside the line, but the anglers below him are one strike away from stealing his thunder. Come here, Thunder. There he is. This one got the painted blade, which is new. It's super tough, super, super tough. So anytime it's like that, you want to do what you do best, and winding the cricket around the docks. Kind of my go-to. Keep thinking I'll get in the back of one of these pockets and catch a big one, but to jerk bait ought to be the best thing for where they're at. But... Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I made it. Choked up pretty good. Two pounds, five ounces. Thank you. It choked up pretty good. It's skinny, but hey, it stopped biting, I guess. Uh, he's definitely in a better area. I don't care if you're worming or jigging, he's definitely, uh, if I survive today, I'll, I'll be fortunate. One pound. Big enough. Two in one period, unbelievable. You know, there's some guys catch here right now, so we can't let off the gas for sure. I mean, Coulter's caught nearly eight pounds, you know, this period, or he has caught eight pounds, so they're biting somewhere. These fish just don't act like they really, really want to bite real well. Like that one right there, hit it twice and didn't get it, and come back and got it, little one. They're just out here on this lake. Cliff, that's going to be a fish landing violation. Yeah. They're just out here on this wind blowing stuff. I mean, this is what I'm going to run the rest of the day. This is this is what I've been trying to make work all day, and I just haven't. This creek we come in now, it's got a little bit more color in it, which is good. I mean, there's a defined mud. The mud's coming out, and there's a defined mud line right there. I'm just staying right ahead of it. Whew, maybe. I think it's going to go. One pound, three ounces. Hey, man. Even I get surprised sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird as we're catching them every cast in two feet of water. Yeah, that was a bass right here. One pound, 14 ounces. Yeah. Let me show you something I got. Can you see it? Shad, whatever. You're getting lucky with their two pounders. That's nice. That's all luck. So pitching and flipping a jig around these docks wouldn't be a bad idea. They weren't so flipping deep. They're all 20, 25 feet. This is what you got. It looks like a geese out of shad to me. Yeah, that's a geese of the shot. Once they start feeding, they eat, you know. It's feeding time now. They catching them somehow. You're still 14 ounces out of feed. Which is rust. Just got to keep the troll motor down and grind. It's just, it's just that tough. It's just what you got to do, or it's what I got to do, because I don't have much figured out. Still trying to figure out how to catch a bass. Nothing, nothing seems to be. I mean, I'm catching, I'm catching a few fish, but everything's non-scorable. Huh. You got it off by the lean. One pound, four ounces. <laughs> that song gonna get it off that limb. One pound, six ounces. All right, hey, I'm like a kid, man. Again, I mean, this is this is why I started bass fishing because you love it. I mean, this is fun. I'm finally gonna be able to take my bibs off almost. 
We just gotta be in the top six. I ain't made it yet. I gotta get about three more bites somehow. Come on, I gotta catch a couple or I am not going to make it. I think all those boys followed Takahiro back where he was going, and they're all catching him now. That's what I think. And every time I think, oh, let's maybe go somewhere else, they keep biting. Giving Cody the big head, thinks he's got a chance. That's Cody right there. Ooh, biggest one yet. <laughs> this is crazy. There's so many of them up there. <laughs> one pound, 12 ounces. Hey, I'll take it. This is so awesome. I mean, look at that. Making the same cast over and over, power pulled down. I mean, I'm casting into a foot of water. You need two pounds, two ounces. Any more than that. But yeah, right now. Come on. I hate fishing this hard and long without catching them or without catching anything. I don't care if I'm going out by myself at home or in a tournament or whatever. Aaron, that's a fish landing violation. Two minute penalty. Skill, then get back to work. One pound, three ounces. Yeah. All right, start me up, Dan. I'm gonna pull us out a little bit. Obviously, we're gonna end up in the rocks. Movement on the score tracker. Aaron Martin's just caught a fish, moves him to six pounds, 11 ounces. OK, it's happening. <laughs> they coming. Welcome back to General Tire's Major League Fishing for the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Yeah. <laughs> I get everything I wanted today. Yeah, we ain't worried about them no more. Two pounds, three ounces. Thank you. Buzz bait. With just over 30 minutes remaining in period three, our top four anglers look to be in great shape to advance to the sudden death rounds. The rest of the field are in a fight for survival. The weights are tight, and with Andy Montgomery and Russ Lane on the brink of elimination, the fear of a score tracker update rises with every cast that comes up empty. Andy's in right now, right, Montgomery? He is currently in fifth position. Yeah. Just because there seems to be some fish around the docks, he's probably the best dock fisherman we got. Nerve wracking. You know, I'm in fifth. Got to be in the top six to move on, which is a big key. But I mean, there's so many guys. If they catch one fish, they pass you. So I got to catch a couple more. I think if I can catch two more good fish, then I'll make it. Which sounds easy, but it's just it's brutal. It's just Flat brutal. The ultimate goal is to make that top six, and I feel like right now we're going to be able to make it. Thing is, we're pretty much all safe. Talker Hero's probably already on the trailer. Is he? He's done that before. Can I quit fishing? If you'd like. Yeah, I don't matter now. Moving on the score tracker, Cliff Pace just caught another fish. He's at six pounds, 10 ounces. Got Aaron Martins and Cliff Pace on my butt. And all they need is one bite. Duh! <laughs> That's gonna come down to the wire. Cliff's catching him. Cliff is one ounce behind you. Come on, come on. This looks good. Bait in here. Just give me a big and put it away. You need a scorable bass to move into the sixth place cut line. Oh, Russ, I'm going to get you if I can. What a challenging grind, isn't it? One pound, one ounce. All right. One that finally, that's like seven non-scoreables I've caught in a row. The last one was like 15 ounces and three quarter. Finally caught one <laughs> that was over. Man, Ross needs a fish bad. Yeah. 
Come on, come on, come on. Please catch one. I know it doesn't sound like much, but with the weights being so bad, those couple of little one-pound bites make all the difference in the world. I think he's going to be a hair short, too. There we go. Come on, don't you come off. You better be a pound, too. You ain't going to make it. One pound, two ounce. Wow. Surprised me. He surprised me. Oh. 14 ounces, non score of a bass. OK, Anthony, with that fish, gives you six pounds, seven ounces. But you need one pound and three ounces to get into six. <laughs> a one three. Got to catch one. One of them's going to catch one. I don't know. I can't I can't settle down and get no confidence in that, and that's not going to work in this in this sport. Guarantee you, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, you're going. We're on about a million miles an hour right now. Uh-uh. Don't say it. Four Parker update. Cliff Pace, seven pounds, 10 ounces. Moved into sixth place. And I've got seven, nine? You got seven pounds, nine ounces. <laughs> he caught one, one ounce bigger. Golly. The way the days went, if I can end the day in sixth place, I'll be happy, happy. Oh, boy. See, he ate it good. The bluegill is pecking out. He ate it. He's big keeper. He's one pound, four ounces. Yes, sir. All right, let's keep going. Who knows? It's, it's, need more, need more. I should have been doing this all day. I told you I shouldn't put the spinning rod down. Obviously, it got tougher today. Score tracker update. Uh oh. Aaron, Aaron Martins has just caught a fish that weighed one pound, four ounces. That gives him seven pounds, 15 ounces, and moves him into the sixth place spot. Uh oh. And Cliff Pace bite. is in seventh, and Russ Lane is in eighth. Oh. Andy Montgomery's uh -huh. in fifth place with seven pounds, 15 ounces as well. You both have six fish, but he has the biggest fish with two pounds, one ounce. I know, Dan. I'm not stupid. I know. I remember you told me I need one four to get the uh, tie in. To, yeah, tie it, tie it. There's one. Oh, shoot. God, dog it. Freaking slat landed. Dude, that would suck to get knocked out on the tiebreaker. Oh, yeah. Tie. I'm losing a tie. No, I don't want that. Who wants to lose in a tie? Let me have that sleep. Never mind. Oh, yeah. Oh, the line broke. Oh, Cliff got him one? Three pounds, nine ounces. <laughs> Thank you, baby. <sighs> Cliff Pace just caught a three pound, nine ounce bass. What? That moves him into fifth place, puts Andy Montgomery down in sixth place with seven pounds, 15 ounces, and kicks Aaron Martins out to seventh place. Wow. He just saved, he just, he's in. I'm over here catching nine scoreables, and Cliff Pace is catching three 15s. Way to pick me up and throw me down. I didn't think it was that big or I wouldn't have swung him. Maybe we'll survive this deal somehow or another. So just like that, I'm in eighth? Yes, sir. But I have seven, nine, right? Yes. So I could. Any scoreable fish will. Yeah, put me in six. Boom! Skipping chicken got one, son. Nope, he got one. On the buzz, bait. Score tracker update. Andy Montgomery just caught a fish, moves him to nine pounds, five ounces. He's in sixth place. He's in sixth place? Yes. Oh, uh, it's over. Oh, come on, one more fish. Sorry. They wasn't catching nothing, and then all of a sudden, 10 minutes, everybody catches them. One minute, still the same.
One pound, two ounces. I failed today. That's why I said if I make it through this day, I'll, I'll change. I'll, I'll be different. I'm uh, tweaked out right now. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that's not Lines out. That's the end of the third period. I'm all right. I made the cut every time. I'm good. <laughs> what a day. I don't know how I made it, but I was pretty sure I made it. <sighs> Whoa! Huh. Gee. I made the day a lot harder on myself than what I should have, but I'm very thankful that we managed to scrap enough together to survive, and we'll go play another day, and maybe it'll be a little easier on me. This is the time of the year, this type of the lake, you know? It's kind of like uh, the way I like to fish, so I caught a lot of fish in the square of your crankbait, and I can't wait to get to the next round. General Tire's Major League Fishing is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. B&W Trailer Hitches, Towing Adventure, Abu Garcia for life. Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. And by Barbasol Razors, a close, comfortable shave for the past 100 years. Today, 10 Bass Pro Tour anglers began their journey to the Summit Cup trophy, but only six would overcome elimination round one. With heavy winds and post-frontal conditions, the anglers were tested both mentally and physically on Lake of the Ozarks. It's brutal. One angler overcame Mother Nature and schooled his competitors in a lesson of fall fishing 101. Takahiro Omori started shallow and took an early lead with a crankbait pattern that kept him untouchable throughout the entire round. Let's catch up with Tak to check out his winning baits in Bass Pro Shop's end of the line. This is Takahiro Omori. This is a bait I won elimination round. This is 1.5 shad color square bill crankbait. This is a white braided jig with a white trailer. And those ones I fish around some kind of like point or some gravel or some around the wood. <laughs> or if I see the bot dogs, I throw a braided jig. That's how I won the elimination round. <laughs> With today's win, Takahiro Omori is advancing to the sudden death rounds and will be joined by Cody Meyer, Michael Neal, Brandon Coulter, Cliff Pace, and Andy Montgomery. The Berkeley Big Bass of the Day goes to Takahiro Omori, <laughs> who pulled in this four pound, four pound eight ounce eight fish ounce. in period one <laughs> that was a turning point in a powerful performance yeah. on Lake of the Ozarks. This is gonna change the things. Today's Barbasol close shave goes to Andy Montgomery, who defended his sixth place spot against Aaron Martins by landing two fish in the final minutes to earn his ticket to the sudden death round. Boom! Let's send it over to Marty Stone, who's with today's winner, Takahiro Omori. Today, we put you on in a creek, a main lake creek, and you did something what I call old school. You went to the back end of the creek and settled down. Tell me about your thought process. I guess I learned from you, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> I fish just like you like to fish. When you were hitting the cover today with the square build, it looked like you were flipping and pitching something. I hear anglers often talk about it takes multiple casts to make these fish fire up. Well, sometimes fish couldn't see from a different angle. Maybe water is muddy, lay down. Yeah, that's very important. That's a really good point. I make five to six casts at least. You talked about there was going to be a time period today when the shad would get active and these fish would replenish or reposition. What happens in the fall to make that happen? I think it was a little warmer, the sunshine. I think that's just a little things to trigger the shad to get active, I think. What does it mean for you to go to one more sudden death? That'd be awesome. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> Takahiro Amore, the winner of elimination round number one in advancing to sudden death. Make sure you tune in next week for elimination round number two of the Wiley X Summit Cup, presented by B&W Trailer Hitches from Central Missouri's Lake of the Ozarks. Until then, thanks for watching General Tire's Major League Fishing. <laughs>